Viridian, the Green Guide, by Clouds, My Head in the Clouds Not Coming Down, read by Oak Shadow 5. Chapter 11 Anxiety Summary Life goes on, even if you're an injured vigilante. Izuku had to pause in the middle of putting on his school uniform as the weight of what he'd done last night came crashing down on him. He'd been too tired last night to really process what had happened, but now the panic was back with a vengeance. He punched Eraser head. Eraser had to be so mad at him. He'd just been trying to get Izuku to a hospital, but then he panicked about what would happen if they figured out who he was, which meant that Mom would figure out what he'd been doing, and she would be so worried and scared, and she really didn't want to do that to her. So he had to get away, but if he wanted to get away, he had to make Eraser let go of him. And she really wasn't thinking that clearly, and the first stupid thought he'd had was to punch a hero in the nose. Whatever respect Eraser had for him was gone. Not that he could have gained that much, considering that Izuku was a quirkless middle schooler who couldn't even aim his slingshot correctly. But that didn't matter, because it was gone now, and he was never going to get it back. Good work, Deku, Rezana Kachan said. You managed to fuck things up even worse than you usually do. He didn't want to have to face Eraser head again. Maybe he would die before he had to see him. That would be good. Maybe he would go out tonight and there would be some villain attack. Maybe even another trigger villain and Izuku would just step in instead of getting hero and then it'd all be over quickly and he wouldn't have to deal with Eraser's anger or Amplify's disappointment or Mom's worry or Kachan's... Izuku shook his head forcefully. He wasn't supposed to be thinking things like that. Besides... With a slug that probably wouldn't work anyway. Even if everything went well and he died, the fact that he didn't go get a hero for such a big villain would be suspicious. And then what would happen if they realized he'd wanted to? And then they'd look into Kachan and he wouldn't be able to go to UA and it would all be Izuku's fault. Izuku shook his head again and winced as he realized he had a headache he'd been ignoring. His ribs hurt more than his head did though. He knew he probably had a little concussion, but it was nothing compared to that time Kachin had pushed him off the slide on accident and he'd hit his head, so Izuku wasn't that worried. He shrugged off his shirt so he could put some cream on his ribs, tensing as the cold cream hit his skin. After that, he finished getting dressed and grabbed his backpack. He didn't want to be late for school. Katsuki turned out the extras that surrounded him as he ate his lunch. The old hag had packed the extras by security today, so he knew it was going to be good. <laughs> Look, guys, it's Deku, one of the extras at another table called out, and sure enough, Katsuki looked up to see Deku walking into the cafeteria with his so shoulders hunched. The extras sitting at his table looked to see how he'd react, but he just scoffed and turned back to his lunch. He was then pig on the castmates, no matter how much they deserved it, and he was going to be the best hero. <laughs> What's up, Deku? The extra with extendable fingers asked. Still alive? A small group of their classmates had surrounded Deku by this point, and even some of the extras at Katsuki's table had gotten up to go join at the fun. The extras were grinning and laughing like fingers had just made the funniest drug on earth, but Deku himself was just staring silently at the ground. Why so quiet? Another extra, this one with boils for hair, asked. Finally really realize that no one cares what you have to say. Well, that might be true, but it probably wasn't very nice to say. Katsuki knew he was acting like a bit of a hypocrite. It wasn't like anything they were saying to Deku was new. Katsuki himself had always prided himself on being especially creative with his insults, after all, so in comparison, these extras' insults were boring and almost as plain as Deku's face. So it wasn't like the extras were saying anything that Deku hadn't heard before, or anything they hadn't heard Katsuki himself say. But Katsuki wanted to be like All Might, which meant that he wasn't going to waste his time insulting people anymore. His classmates didn't have any hope of being heroes, though, so it was okay for them to insult Deku, right? Oh, was that wrong, too? What would All Might do if he was here? Boulders had taken that moment to punch Deku in the ribs, making him gasp in pain. Hmm, either Boulders had gotten stronger, or Deku had already had sore ribs. 
Had some of the other extras given him a beating when Katsuki wasn't looking? Thinking back, Deku had been walking kinda funny all day, like he was sore or something. And goodness knows that the nerd wasn't athletic enough to be sore from exercise. Hey, save some of that air for those who deserve it, nerd! Katsuki looked to some of the teachers who were eating at the small table in the corner. They had to know what was happening. It wasn't like those extras were being quiet. So why weren't they doing anything? Why hadn't they ever done a thing? Wasn't it their job to keep kids from getting hurt or something? What would Ahmed do if he were one of them? He'd probably tell those kids off for being unheroic. But the teachers weren't doing that. Katsuki watched them as the extras kept insulting Deku, and one of them even glanced over and chuckled before turning back to his lunch. That... Well, it was normal, but it didn't seem right. Why wasn't anyone doing anything? Why wasn't he doing anything? The thought made Katsuki stop. Was he supposed to step in? Or I probably would, but that brought him back to the whole hypocrisy thing. But it gave him the right to step in and protect Deku, when just a month ago, he was one of the ones... Well, maybe attacking him wasn't the right way to phrase it, but still. Even if he were to step in, Deku probably wouldn't trust him at all, and all the useless extras might think that Katsuki was admitting that Deku was better than him, or that he was weak. The curry turned to sawdust in his mouth, spicy sawdust, but still flavorless as Deku silently picked the remains of his lunch off the floor and threw them away after one of the extras had knocked it out of his hands. He didn't really know how to describe what he was feeling, he just knew he didn't like it. He was the best. He'd always been the best. And if there was anything the best wasn't, it was a coward. So, so this annoying feeling couldn't be fear. Could it? Izuku walked through the hardware store much more confidently this time, now that he actually knew what he was looking for and how to find it. He should have just picked his pipes up when he left last night's fight. But even though the concussion hadn't been that bad, both it and the pain from being thrown into a wall had made it difficult to focus on anything besides getting away, so Reza wouldn't tell Mom about his vigilantism. Which meant that the pipes had been left to rot among all the other garbage in that alley, and Izuku needed to replace them. He couldn't bring himself to regret giving them to Reza, though. If he'd kept using his capture weapon, there was a good chance he would have gotten hurt, so the pipes were obviously the better option. Not that Reza's capture weapon was bad, it was actually really cool and worked against a lot of villains so that he didn't hurt them any more than he had to and... Oh, right. Izuku was here to get pipes. He should probably buy a few backups to keep in his closet too, just in case he ever lost them again. Yeah, that would be a good idea. And zip ties. It wasn't a big problem when he helped heroes, but Izuku had been having problems restraining the small-time villains he was able to take, to take down on his own. Most of the time he was able to find some kind of rope or cloth to tie them up with, but it would be nice to not have to worry about that anymore. Izuku was extremely proud of himself when he managed to get to the checkout stand with only the items on his list, and at last time when he'd ended up with a lot of other stuff too. To his surprise, his cashier was were killed with the electricity quirk he talked to last time. What was his name again? Oh right, Kaminari! Hey dude! Kaminari smiled as Izuku put his basket down on the counter. Nice to see you back here. Thanks, Izuku said. Uh, how is your electricity training coming? Were any of the electricians willing to teach you? Kaminari nodded eagerly. One of them actually offered to make a temporary apprentice. I'm learning all about the basics and how circuits work and stuff. I didn't even realize that my quirk might not be effective against a flying villain. Isn't that insane? Izuku nodded. That was one of the main limitations of electric heroes. They couldn't actually elec electrocute something that wasn't grounded. But the way that he talked about villains specifically. Are you going to be a hero? Kaminari shrugged and smiled. <laughs> That's the hope. My quirk is flashy enough for it, so it's just a question of if I'm actually smart enough to get in. Cash or card? Izuku smiled encouragingly as he handed over a handful of cash. You can do it. 
Caminari puts the pipes and zip ties in a plastic bag. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I'm sure gonna try. Hey, what are you making anyway? You were buying pipes last time. Isiko didn't know how to respond to that, so he just shrugged. Caminari laughed. <laughs> All right, keep your secrets, dude. Good luck with whatever it is, though. Izuku nodded. And good luck with your apprenticeship. See you later. Izuku had never really been lucky. In fact, he'd been mostly the opposite. But he was grateful for Kaminari's words anyway. He'd run into Razorhead eventually. And then he'd need all the luck he could get. That was chapter 11 of Viridian the Green Guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And have a good rest of your day. Bye! Hey, Artex! The old hag had packed the extra, sp extra spicy, extra spicy curry. The old hag had packed the, the old hag, the old hag had packed the extra spicy curry. I can't read today, apparently. Wasn't it their job to keep kids from getting hurt or something? I have some stuff in my mouth. Ah. Oh, right. Kaminari. So, now I have, I have to remember Kaminari's voice. What did Kami sound like again? Hello, phone.